Hi, hello everybody. Um, so um, let me begin. So um, I know there might not be that many people uh, online now, but I'm going to get started. Um, so I'm Natasha, and for those of you who don't know me, I live in Oxford. Um, well, Abingdon. Um, hello, hello. Thanks for joining. Um, so I've done a few Instagram talks. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining. Um, if you have any questions whilst I'm talking, please just go ahead and, and ask and I'll try my best to answer. Um, it doesn't have to be about the topic that we're doing today. Um, but today I'm going to talk about um, English theatre. Um, I've sort of chosen this topic because it, I think, you know, theatre is such a part of English culture and many other cultures. Um, and so it'd be interesting for you guys to hear maybe some of the differences in your own culture. Um, let me just firstly tell you a bit about myself. So I currently work in a secondary school. Um, a secondary school is for children aged 11 to 16. And I work with uh, young people with uh, various learning difficulties. And I also teach uh, Skype online as well. And uh, so I live here in Abingdon, which is just south of Oxford. I have two cats and a boyfriend and uh, the cats might pop in during this video. Um, so yeah, let's let's get started. Thank you for those who are joining. Um, and like I say, if you have any questions, please just go ahead anytime. Um, I'm going to flick the screen round at certain times just to show you uh, my PowerPoint, my lovely PowerPoint. So I've got some nice pictures. Um, so this is what we're going to be talking about today, English theatre. Um, and I just thought this was such a beautiful image. I mean, this is a really classic uh, English theatre, painted ceiling, small seats. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Okay, so uh, English theatre began, I mean, the first thing that you'll think of, well, the first thing that came to my mind when I thought about how to begin talking is William Shakespeare. You can't think about the theatre and England without thinking about Shakespeare. Um, so we're going to talk about him a little bit. Um, but firstly, I'm going to talk about the first playhouses um, or theatres, um, but they were known as playhouses. Um, so after the Middle Ages, well, during the Middle Ages, England was essentially at war all the time. Um, and then we were at war with France and there were civil wars. Um, so there was a lot going on um, during the Middle Ages, not much time for theatre. Um, and before, sort of before the 1500s, um, most plays that you would have seen would have been religious. So they would have been um, Catholic, Protestant, depending on the time. Um, so most of the plays that you would have seen would have been um, religious. Um, and it really wasn't until, let me check my notes. Well, actually Henry VIII, you might have heard of him big fat king as he's depicted as and um, he had eight or uh, six wives you may have heard the rhyme divorced beheaded died divorced beheaded survived so he was a king um, and he actually sort of introduced the idea of secular plays um, meaning secular non-religious um, so, um, and actually his daughter, Elizabeth, she uh, really cracked down on religious plays and, and began um, 
began. Hello, I'm back. And hello to anyone who's joining. Feel free to ask any questions at any time. So, um, theatres were sort of constructed around 1570. Um, the first theatre that was built in England was literally called The Theatre, not very imaginative. Um, and it was built by an English actor called James Burbage. Um, and he was uh, actually a friend of William Shakespeare. Um, actually, the, the first theatre that Burbage built, there was some dispute, some back and forth, and the theatre actually moved. So the theatre, which was the name of the theatre, moved from one side of the river to the other, and that theatre is now known as the Globe Theatre. It's burnt down, been built a few times, but that's what's called the Globe Theatre. Um, so I've got this image here, which I really like. So this shows uh, like an old, the old style of, of, of theatre. Um, I think this is actually an image of the original or an, an, an of, of the Globe Theatre, um, which is where a lot of Shakespeare's plays were performed. Um, you generally speaking, you had this was where the audience would stand. They could pay one penny to uh, to watch the play, and then I think it was a cost three pennies, so three p up in the in the stalls up here. Um, the audience were very very much part of the performance. If they didn't like what was going on on stage then they might throw their food or heckle, which is another word of yell. They might yell at the at the actors on stage. Um, so they really were part of the performance. This picture only shows a few people. In reality, everyone would have been crammed in. This, this area would be absolutely full of people. Um, and people could, could buy beer and snacks and throw things at the stage. Um, and it really was a sense of the crowd were just as much a part of the show as the actors on stage. Um, and I'm sure you know, but there was no, at, during this time, sort of late 1500s uh, and later on, there was no female actors um, because it was seen as not, you know, not a very good career path, shall we say. So um, men would play the women's characters. They would wear female dresses. Uh, they particularly used um, young boys who had high-pitched voices um, and could be quite feminine. Um, so, so during that time, it was only men men perform and it wasn't till a bit later uh, that women performed and we'll talk about that a little bit um the name of one of the first plays which i thought was brilliant was ralph royster doister no idea what that's about but i just thought that was a fantastic name for the first one of the first plays oh i'm glad this is interesting <laughs> thank you um and please if you have any questions just ask away um, so before um, before William Shakespeare, there you know when plays were first being written, uh, there was a group of people called the University Wits. Um, so this would have been students just from Oxford and Cambridge, and we call them those students Oxbridge. So if you went to Oxford or Cambridge, you'd be an Oxbridge student, and they began writing more adult plays. And like I said, non-religious uh, plays, so secular plays, and they um, would write plays. And you know, around the time, or well, just as, as Shakespeare was was coming around. Uh, so Shakespeare was born on the twenty sixth of April, fifteen sixty four was the year he was born, and was born on in Stratford, um, Stratford upon Avon, so by a river. 
Um, he wrote 38 plays and 154 sonnets. Um, hello, thank you for joining everyone. Hello. 154 sonnets, which is incredible. Um, and it's believed that he received a classical Latin education. Um, so just to show you where Stratford is on a map. So we've got lovely old England here, tiny little England. Stratford is here. So I live here. I live in Oxford or just, just sort of underneath Oxford, just about here. And Stratford is up here. Um, and here's another map. So just about here. Um, so that's where Shakespeare was born. And this is the Globe Theatre, which you can visit today. I would really recommend if you ever come to England or if you've ever visited and you get a chance to go to the Globe. It is a fantastic experience. You can see, see it's obviously been um, modernised throughout the years, but it still has this classic Tudor look and thatched roofs, a thatched roof. So this is fantastic. So this, this is the Globe Theatre that you can still visit now. Always has Shakespeare playing. Um, and again, you can stand, you can sit, and you really are part of the part of the audience um, when you go to the Globe. It's fantastic. It's a great experience. Um, I absolutely love going to the theatre. It's one of my favourite things to do. Uh, not that I go often, because it's a lot more expensive than the one penny that it used to cost. Um, because the theatre used to be very cheap. It used to be, you know, for the everyday person, for the working class man, what are you going to do at the weekend? You're going to go to the pub or you're going to go to the theatre. Um, and now in England, I mean, you can get a last minute cheap ticket to a show for about 20 quid, 20 pounds. Um, however, that's if you're lucky. Really, tickets are about 40, 50 pounds, depending what you see. Um, and we'll we'll go on to that a bit later. Um, so the Globe Theatre held up to 3,000 spectators or 3,000 people. Um, and the bottom area that we were talking about, that was called the pit. Um, and that's where people would pay 1p and they could watch the performance. And can you imagine, it would have, it would have been really smelly and loud rambunctious there probably would have been fights and you know people were drinking beer as they're watching the plays they're scrapping they're shouting at the actors the actors are shouting back um it would have been a really really exciting way to see to see a, a play um but also you know quite violent i imagine um there was a crest so above the main entrance to the globe uh, they had a motto in Latin. I don't speak Latin, but I'm going to try my best. Totus mundus agit histronium. And in Latin, in English, that means the whole world is a playhouse or the whole world is a theatre. And I just think that's lovely. I think that's so true, isn't it? I mean, everything is a show and a, you know, a performance in a way. Um, and just very quickly, just the the, um, the Globe Theatre did burn down in 1613 um, and it was rebuilt in the same spot in 1614. And anyone who watched my uh, talk last week um, will know I was talking about Oxford um, and a lot of theatres uh, were burnt down, rebuilt. Um, however, theatres in Oxford and uh, buildings in Oxford during the Second World War uh, were not bombed because this is where Hitler wanted uh, the capital to be. Um, so just a side note there. Um, thank you everyone who's joining us and like I say please any questions you have doesn't have to be about the theatre ask away that's what I'm here for. Um, so the first theatre was called the Theatre Royale on Drury Lane 
um, and it was built in 1663. Um, so, you know, it would have hosted performances three and a half centuries. That's a long time. Again, destroyed by fire. Fairly common. I guess a lot of buildings were made of wood. They wouldn't have had the, the structures that we have today. Um, and this theatre I wanted to talk about because it's very famous because it's been visited by every British monarch. So every member of the royal family has visited this theatre uh, since its restoration. And I've got a picture here to show you. Um, so this is the Theatre Royale. Absolutely gorgeous. So you've got the stage. Obviously this is the, the backdrop. So the stage would go much further back. These are the dress circles, so people can sit in the dress circles. You've got the stalls and you've got um, the seats down here. Now these seats, as in all English theatres, are probably tiny. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been to an English theatre. Maybe give me a thumbs up if you've been to an English theatre before. If any of you have, please let me know. But the seats are tiny. You really squeeze in. Um, but it's worth it because it's so beautiful. I just think this is gorgeous. It is stunning. And um, yeah, so um, I just want to talk a little bit. Uh, there's lots of different theatres I'm going to talk about. Um, there's a theatre called the Lyceum Theatre, um, which is a great name. And it opened in 1904 um, and it, it's not just used uh, for traditional plays. You also have bands perform. Um, so you, you might have heard of Led Zeppelin, uh, Bob Marley and the Wailers, U2, The Who, The Police. Thank you for your comment. Yeah, it is, it is absolutely beautiful, that theatre. Um, so a lot of theatres uh, they didn't just have plays on, some are used um, for musical performances as well. Um, and the Lyceum is currently playing um, The Lion King, I believe. I think The Lion King has been there for many years. Um, and I had the fortune, I saw The Lion King twice, and it is incredible. I'm going to recommend some plays for you guys if you ever come to England because. There are so many. Um, just a little backstory about me. So my grandma loved the theatre and her mother, so my great grandmother, was an actress, um, which she wasn't allowed to be an actress at the time. Thank you. <laughs> and um, yeah, she wasn't allowed to be an actress, but she still was an actress. Um, and I think my love of theatre, maybe it's genetic, I don't know, but I've always loved it. So my grandma, every year for my birthday when I was younger, probably about when I was about eight, nine years old, my grandma would, would take me, she wouldn't buy me a present, we'd go to London and we'd, we'd go to the theatre. Um, now I'm not from Oxford, I'm from a town called Crawley, which is south of England. Um, and we'd get the train up to London, it would take an hour, we'd get maybe something to eat or we'd just go straight to the theatre and we'd watch a play and uh, it was my favourite thing to do um, for my birthday and I was very fortunate that my grandma could take me um, and she is 82 years old now and we still try and go to the theatre when we can. Um, so let me just show you, this is the Lyceum. So this is where you've got um, the Lion King showing now. Um, and let me just show you. Again, all this detail is so phenomenal. I just think it's stunning. Um, and the idea, these seats, all the way at the back, even the highest seats, um, you might have heard this expression. Some people would call them the nosebleeders. Um, if you've ever been to a football match, this term is still used. And by nosebleeders, they mean it's so high up 
that your nose would literally bleed. Well, not literally, but, but you're really as high as you can go. But that's the beauty of the theatre. I am often at the highest, furthest seats because they tend to be cheaper than the seats down here. But you can still see everything and you can hear everything and it really doesn't matter. That's why theatre is so great. Um, so uh, I've just got some images just to show you a few more theatres. Uh, just switch the camera background. The Adelphi Theatre, this opened in 1806. I mean, I think this is one of the largest theatres. Um, it's huge, absolutely huge. Can you imagine standing on that stage? Ah, oh, performing, it would be amazing. Um, an amazing, amazing experience. Uh, Her Majesty's Theatre. So uh, this, uh, you can probably see it if I close it. The Phantom of the Opera. That has been playing at Her Majesty's Theatre God, who knows? I think may I think it could be fifty years, sixty years that play's been on. Um, I have seen the Phantom of the Opera. It is phenomenal. Um, when you go to see the Phantom of the Opera at the beginning of the play, the chandelier, so the the ceiling light, literally swoops down across the audience. Um, and it scares you. You think, oh my God, the, something's happening, it's broken. Um, but it's all, of course, it's part of the play. Um, and it's incredible. And obviously the singing. Um, I don't know if you guys know about Phantom of the Opera. Um, but it's a classic. And like I say, it's been on um, in Her Majesty's Theatre. I think, if I'm, I could be wrong, but I think over 50 years it is. And it always sold out always um and again look at this beautiful theater i mean absolutely stunning really lovely inside these pillars here uh yeah just gorgeous um so Oh, Her Majesty's Theatre has been associated with a playhouse longer than any other theatre in London. Um, and it's had four different buildings and lots of name changes. It used to be called uh, King George the First. Can you guess who was king at the time? Um, that was in 1714. And again, the building was destroyed by fire in 1789. Um, so very common, a lot of our theatres were destroyed by fires and rebuilt, sometimes moved, sometimes built in the same place. Um, so I just wanted to talk about uh, some of the theatres that are on, uh, oh, some, some of the theatres, some of the plays that are on now. And hello, hiya, thanks for joining everyone. And please ask any questions that you have. It doesn't have to be about our topic today, which is theatre. Um, so you may, I mean, you're so, oh, hello, this is my cat, this is Giles, he's very handsome, he's just coming to interrupt and say hello. <laughs> um, he's very muddy, I don't know what he's been doing, Giles, say hello to everyone. Can you hear him purring? Purr away. Oh, he's going to want to sit on my laptop, that's what he's going to want to do. Okay, so just a list um, of some plays that are on at the moment. Oh, thank you. I know, he's so handsome. I love him. Um, I've also got a kitten called Wesley. Um, and I spell, so Giles, his name is G-I-L-E-S. And my other cat's called Wesley. Thanks for the question. Please, any, any questions, let me know. And uh, it's nice if you, a few more of you are joining. Fantastic. Oh, and someone said you have two cats at home. Oh, lovely. I love cats. My parents also have this gorgeous dog called Rufus. And oh, he's a cockapoo. So he's a cocker spaniel uh, poodle. And very close with the spelling there. So Giles, it's G-I-L-E-S. And um, yeah, it, it's actually, I've named him after 
don't know if you guys know the show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um, it's an old 90s TV show about uh, someone who kills vampires. Um, and so my, my cats are named after two of my favourite characters from that. It's very sad, but uh, there we go. <laughs> That's it. That's the correct spelling. Yeah, Giles. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, my parents have this dog. Oh my God, he's gorgeous. Um, I'm sure one day I'll do an Instagram back home with my parents and I can show you because he's just lovely. Um, so back to the theatre, there's a few shows on, well, obviously it's the West End. That's what we call uh, London theatre, the West End. And um, you may have heard, I'm just gonna read a list of a few plays that are on now. Some of them are new, uh, Hamilton, um, if anyone's listened to the soundtrack, I love it, but I've killed it, meaning I listen to it way too much. I've listened to the soundtrack hundreds of times and my boyfriend is sick of hearing me sing the songs, but it's very good. I really would. Hamilton, amazing. And Dear Evan Hansen, Waitress, another classic. And you may have heard of Les Miserables. Um, which is all about the French Revolution and oh, it's so sad but the music is outstanding it is outstanding um, the Book of Mormon and um, that's on at the Prince of Wales theatre um, the Lion King um, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child so just to name a few that are on at, in the West End at the moment um, if you ever come to England, you must go to the theatre. It is the best experience ever. Um, I mean, I assume most of you are, or some of you at least, are from Russia. And I would love to go to the theatre in Russia, especially to see Russian ballet. Um, I love ballet, is my, my other love. And uh, hello everyone, hi, thanks for joining. Um, another really interesting thing, um, about our theatre is um, you may have heard of Buffalo Bill so slight, slightly off tangent uh, Buffalo Bill uh, was, in, was an American uh, he was a cowboy basically in the wild wild west and Buffalo Bill um, was a real man uh, his name I think it was William F. Cody is his name but his nickname was Buffalo Bill and he actually traveled to England and around Europe and performed a play called Buffalo Bill's Wild Wild West um, and he performed it in front of the Queen um, I've got it's a bit blurry this image but it gives you an idea so Buffalo Bill's Wild West it was a show where they had shooting and performances. This is Buffalo Bill here. And they performed in front of the Queen, this amazing show um, featuring, you may have heard of Annie Oakley, who was excellent with a gun. Um, they had uh, Native Americans, they had cowboys, um, and they performed this not just to the Queen, but lots of the royal family um, which I just thought was so fascinating to have come all the way from America you know late 1800s and perform this in the front well was it 1800s yeah 18 18 87 um, and it was to celebrate the Queen's uh, Jubilee um, and so Queen Victoria saw this performance, which is amazing. Can you imagine the Queen? She would never have seen anything like this before. Suddenly you've got cowboys shooting each other on stage and absolutely brilliant. Um, uh, oh, this is the London's largest theatre and it's called London Palladium. And it has 2,286 seats. I mean, ginormous would be a word I would use. Breathtaking. Look at the size of it. 
and again just gorgeous a lot of gold you'll notice a lot of detailed gold around around in the theater always chandeliers and for those who are listening earlier so in phantom of the opera you have a huge chandelier that swings down onto the stage it is amazing um so that's what london's largest theater i don't know what's playing there at the moment the smallest theatre, on the other hand, Jerryman Street Theatre. How many people do you think you could fit on that on those seats? Mm, not too many. Um, and this is just an image of some of the theatres. I'm not sure, but I think this is the Barbican Theatre. I might be wrong, but I've seen a play there before. Um, and the Barbican is, again, it's a, it's a bit more of a modern theatre, but some fantastic plays this oh well, i've not written the name of this one but again such a difference between this theater and this theater so you, you know you've got all these amazing buildings um this theater which is in london which was uh i don't think this is on anymore that's monty python those of you who might have watched uh some Monty Python, uh, which is a, a, a comedy show, that well, was, um, and uh, I mean, look at the size of that building, incredible. Um, and here's just some images, just to sort of give you an idea. Uh, this play was uh, called Equus. Oh, oh no, beg your pardon. This play is Warhorse, um, and I mean the. Can you see you've got actors or puppeteers underneath? Um, just the talent and, and the stage and the costume and the lighting. I mean, so much goes into the theatre. Um, I love, personally, my favourite thing to do is to see a musical. I love this, this kind of camp, bright colours, dancing, singing. I love it. Um, this will be a performance at the Globe Theatre, so obviously women can perform now, didn't used to be able to, used to just be men, and you can still stand and be part of the crowd, and this lady, or whoever's acting, would be really joining in with the audience, the audience might be shouting or heckling, and it would all be part of the fun, part of joining in. Um, now I've tried to do a list of the shows that I've seen, and I've probably missed off half. Um, I wanted to show you, because I, I love going to theatre, um, what a programme looks like. So we call, when you go to the theatre, you can buy a programme. They're often quite expensive. Probably, this was probably about £10, maybe. A bit more, a bit less. Um, but... I personally love to buy the programmes because then I have them forever and I always think when I've got kids one day I can show them the things I've seen. Um, so I saw Evita, I actually saw Evita two years ago. Um, oh, the music, you might have heard of Evita, um, all about Eva Perón and Argentina. I, I could... I could listen to her sing all day long. Um, so we call these theatre programmes. Unfortunately, most of my theatre programmes are in my parents' loft, meaning they're not here, not where I live now. Um, and in the theatre programme, let me just show you. Oh, how are we doing for time? Excellent, plenty of time. Um, so in the theatre programme, you normally get... Um, obviously who's performing and images of the play in fact let me flick the camera around that would be better wouldn't it um, I mean the costumes look at her dress oh I love it um, this was definitely one of my favourite musicals so I'm just trying to get that light out of the way. Look at the set design, the costumes. Um, the dance. Oh, sorry. 
sorry, apologies there if, if it froze for you. I mean, the set is quite a simple set, actually. And look at her outfit. Wow. And her hair. Oh, do you think that's a wig? Could be a wig. Who knows? And a lot of actors, they actually do their own hair and makeup. I always used to think that they would have someone backstage do it for them, but they have to learn to do it themselves. Look at these dresses. Forgive me if you're not into costumes or dresses, but oh, I am. Look at these and the, ma the men's suits. Oh, it was so brilliant. This character is sort of a Che Guevara type character. Um, and obviously that would be Ava Perone. Um, yeah, so the the, the, the programmes are great and they might tell you what, what's happening, Act 1, Act 2. Um, again, oh, look at those dresses. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Stunning, absolutely stunning. Um, so this programme really is mostly just sort of images from the play. So you might want to look through, see what you can expect from the performance. Um, again, fantastic costumes. What a great image. Them throwing, throwing money into the air. Ava throwing money into the air for the working class. Um, yeah, so that's, that's a theatre programme. And in the back, uh, you might get information on who directed it or who wrote the music. Uh, merchandise, obviously, they want to sell things. And quite often in the programme as well, you will get um, this, which will be the information on the actors and the actresses performing. So, for example, Lucy O'Brien, who played Ava, um, and the thing, other things that she's been in. Um, so if you're interested in things like that, it's always worth getting the programme and you can find out about the actors. Um, so I've seen Evita, that was fantastic. Another play I saw recently was Aladdin, um, which was absolutely ridiculous. Um, it was a bit more, to be honest, it was more like a pantomime, meaning it was a bit more uh, over the top, as you might be able to tell from that image. Um, but it was it was good fun. It was good fun. Obviously, it depends what you want to see. Um, so to, to name a few other plays that I would recommend. Um, and remember, if you have any questions at any point, please just ask away. So I've seen The Lion King, Phantom of the Opera, The Book of Mormon, Mary Poppins. Oh my goodness, Mary Poppins is back in the West End. Go see Mary Poppins. Oh, it's amazing. Um, Bombay Dreams. This was a, a play set in India. And I saw it when I was about 12 years old. And I loved it. Very colourful. Uh, very progressive. Um, I saw an Alice in Wonderland ballet. So I love ballet. And I love Alice in Wonderland. Um, you may have heard of the, the Alice in Wonderland. C.S. Lewis uh, wrote the book. And um, the costumes were phenomenal. Absolutely breathtaking. Um, and the set was very clever. Um, I've seen the Nutcracker, I'm sure most of you have heard of the Nutcracker Ballet. Uh, or Swan Lake. Uh, very classic. Uh, very much classics. Um, you would see them at Christmas time, generally speaking. Uh, Giselle, which I believe is, is Giselle French? Does anyone know? I think Giselle is a French French ballet. Um, I also saw The Lord of the Rings on stage as a musical, which was <laughs> something else. It was incredible. Um, yeah, and a, a bunch more, but I won't bore you with going on about that. Um, so I've just got a few more images to show you here. So this is Les Miserables, the world's longest running musical. 
um, again, it's similar to Phantom of the Opera. I think it's been uh, in the theatre for more than 50 years. And I've got, when I was in London, I saw Chicago Musical, but I don't remember in which theatre. Ah, oh, interesting. I saw Chicago. Um, I can't remember what theatre it was, but I saw Chicago as well many years ago. Um, God, probably about 10 years ago, maybe. When did you see it? Can you remember? Um, and it was, oh, it was brilliant. Yeah, I loved, loved Chicago. Um, this is an image I found of the Lion King. Just amazing costumes. I mean, just having the, the, the lion's masks. Fantastic. I think visually, especially if you've got kids or you're a big kid yourself, the Lion King is like no, like nothing else I've seen. The costumes, at one point they bring on stage an elephant, not a real life elephant, but an elephant um, that's designed and it's, oh, it's amazing. Uh, this is a play I saw called Avenue Q um, with puppets, which you might find a little creepy, <laughs> maybe a little disconcerting, um, but it was actually really funny. Um, and it's very clever because you don't look at the actor's face, you look at the puppet when they're performing. It's very clever, very interesting and very funny. Not a children's play, Avenue Q, if you ever see it. Very much for adults, so don't let your kids see. Uh, and this is Mary Poppins, which as I said was just incredible. Um, they had, um, uh, um, I can't remember the character's name, but at one point the, the main chimney sweep guy, oh goodness, I can't remember his name. <laughs> he literally goes upside down and tap dances on the ceiling. I couldn't believe it. I was literally jaw dropped. Like my mouth was open during this performance. Upside down, singing, tap dancing. I mean, it, it, the skills, the acting and the skills required, unbelievable. Um, and Mary Poppins is actually back in the West End now. Um, and I do have just an image as well I wanted to show you. Uh, this isn't the ballet that I saw of Alice in Wonderland, but just to give you an idea, uh, again, very pretty, very pretty. Um, yeah, so, you know, there's been a lot of history when it comes to English theatre. It's changed over the years. A lot of the theatres or playhouses have burnt down, been rebuilt. Um, and I think it's a real testament uh, to, the, to the people of England that we still have this real um, passion for theatre. Um, sadly, I think a lot of young people don't go to the theatre as much as they used to, um, probably because you've got the cinema and uh, obviously lots of other things, and it is quite expensive. Um, the government did do something um, probably about five years ago where they, uh, they said anyone aged 25 or under could go to the theatre for one pound if you booked in advance. And this was fantastic because you've got people going to the theatre who would think, oh, the theatre's not for me. And they would go because it was one pound. Um, but unfortunately, uh, that doesn't happen anymore. Um, but regardless, you know, people still go. Um, and uh, obviously you have to turn off your mobile phones, which I'm sure is the theatre everywhere um and yeah do, do you, any of you have any questions thank you for listening to me sort of go on for a while um but if anyone has any questions feel free to ask um also it might might be just a 
general question that you have about you know English language um, so please feel free to ask anything you want to now um, which is what I'm here for we've got 15 minutes left so plenty of time for questions um, um, great uh, one of the slides I missed out which I'm actually just going to go back to is I just wanted to talk a little bit more about women in theatre because I thought this was quite uh, interesting so bear in mind theatre sort of began really kicking off so really happening around uh, 1550 sort of mid 1500s um, and women were allowed to perform about 100 years later 1660s um, so it took a hundred years or so before women could, could join in on the stage. Um, and I've got a good question here. Do I like concerts? Yes, I love going to concerts. Um, I love seeing bands perform. Um, who was the last band I saw live? Oh God, I went to, um, it was in Brighton. Has anyone been to Brighton? Um, Brighton is south of London. Let me just get an image up for you on the map so you can see. Um, I love Brighton. It is um, a really great place for live music. Um, so if I just flip the camera around. Brighton is just on the coast, south coast. So um, if I zoom out a little bit here. So on a train, you could probably go, that's my hometown is Crawley. You've probably not heard of it because it's quite small. So Brighton to London, probably about one and a half hours on the train. Both great places for music. Um, but Brighton, there you can see the beach. <laughs> um, it, uh, yeah, it's, it's got great music venues. I went for a friend's birthday and we saw some of his friends perform live and they were incredible. It was good fun. Lots of dancing, drinking beer, obviously. Um, do you like concerts? Does anyone else um, like going to music? My brother, you know, he's the music man. He he lives for gigs. We call them gigs here. Um, he loves going to a gig. Um, he's probably seen over a thousand bands, maybe more. Um, and he also likes to go to music festivals. Um, and a music festival in England normally lasts about three days and you normally camp, so you have a tent and you normally get very wet and very muddy. Um, you may have seen pictures of Glastonbury Festival, just going off track a little bit, but you will, let me show you an image, I mean it's, um, I've never been to Glastonbury, um, but you might get an idea. I mean, this is one of the biggest, um, biggest festivals in the UK. I mean, I think a hundred thousand people, maybe. Uh, people get dressed up, and they get very muddy. <laughs> um, it's a very, very big festival. Um, I've been to a few festivals over the years and uh, they are they're fantastic um what else was i going to tell you oh i was going to talk a little bit more about william shakespeare um i believe up here oh yes i have got it so let's grab my my bookcase oh let me grab this book so um Oh, your favourite singer is Sting. It's my dream to go to his concert. Oh my goodness, that would be amazing. Um, Sting was uh, in The Police, right? The the band, The Police. Amazing. Oh my God, he'd be so good live. Um, who's the best who I've seen live? I did see, oh, you might not have heard of them. They're a sort of a heavy metal band called Tool. Um, T-O-O-L um, I saw them many years ago 
and they were amazing. They put on such a performance. Um, and also uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, they were great. Uh, Green Day, not I've heard of them. But um, yeah, Sting would be amazing. Um, I love Motown music as well, you know, like um, more uh, like old school, old school kind of vibe. Um, and I love, actually I really like a Russian singer who I've never seen live, but she is my favourite singer, um, Regina Spector. Has anyone heard of Regina Spector? Um, she was born in Russia. Uh, and she moved to New York when she was younger and she sings in English and um, but she also has some Russian songs and I love her so much she plays the piano she plays guitar and she just has the most beautiful voice very effortless you know when someone sings and it's, it's like they're not even trying an Englishman in New York. Yes, that's such a tune. Englishman in New York. I mean, I can't sing, obviously. You don't hear me singing. Um, yeah, that's a fantastic song. Yeah, I love that song. Um, yeah, so Regina Spector. Actually, one of my favourite songs of hers is called Après Moi. Um, and uh, she sings in Russian uh, for part of it. And I would love to know what she says. I've never, I've never known, I've never looked it up. I kind of, part of me likes not knowing and the other part of me really wants to know. And, uh, and last year in Moscow, I saw Romeo and Juliet in French. Wow, that would have been amazing. That, that would have, so do you speak French as well? Because that, that would be amazing. Um, I was actually Juliet in Romeo and Juliet when I was, when I was 17 so you know quite quite a few years ago um and uh, I had to learn obviously all of Juliet's lines and I absolutely loved it I had a dress made for me um and we had a we had a scaffolding um so like you know when a building's being built and they have outside they have a scaffolding um we had that as our stage uh, for the balcony scene where Juliet is talking to Romeo um, and it was it was really good fun and, uh, and yes I learned French at school and at university wow thanks for sharing that's amazing I wish I could speak French but alas not very well um, I did French at school but that's the problem with with our education system unfortunately English people we're not very good at studying other languages, are we? And um, I think at school we maybe had one hour of French a week, if that, maybe an hour maximum. Um, but studying it at university level, that must have been amazing. It's a beautiful language, I love French. Um, and also to see Shakespeare in another language, that would be interesting. I did see, I saw Romeo and Juliet once, I just remembered, many, many years ago, um, and it was in different dialects of Indian, um, so you still understood the play, because it's a classic and a famous play, and you, you know what's going on, um, but it was in, in different uh, Indian languages, it was really cool, really interesting. And you say your daughter doesn't like French, she is learning English and Chinese. Fantastic. Great languages to learn. Oh, Chinese, Man Mandarin, right? That would be so hard. Um, so amazing. Um, my friend Faith, she can speak Chinese. She lived in China for about five years. Um, really interesting language, but incredibly difficult because it's so different to to anything else isn't it um so that's great how old is your how old is your daughter and that's brilliant that she's learning learning other languages that's fantastic 
Um, is Chinese popular in England? Um, the the language, no, I don't know anyone. She's only eleven and she's learning Chinese and and English. That's brilliant. Um, no, unfortunately, in England, nobody learns Chinese. It's just not a language that they have in schools. The only language that students learn is um, French, Spanish, or German. Generally, those are the only three languages we offer. Um, some schools, um, you might be able to learn Japanese, but generally speaking, you don't learn don't learn Chinese at all, which is a shame. But um, I guess they want us to learn more more European languages. I guess. Um, but like I say, I mean, it's a real shame in England that we don't we don't um, we don't focus on languages as much as we should. I mean, I didn't like didn't enjoy learning languages at school. Um, whereas now, I'd love you know I'd love to learn French or Spanish or anything. And sadly, I actually don't speak any other any other languages, unfortunately. Um, I can speak a tiny bit of French, um, and I enjoy learning uh, Japanese just for fun, um, but at very very low level. Um, so yes, yeah, I don't, I haven't, I haven't actually learned another language. Um, I've lived abroad, but in English speaking countries, so. You know, I'd still a dream of mine would still be to live um, in Spain or China or anywhere and, and learn their language, um, or even learn Russian, which I just think is would be really hard, but such a cool language to learn. Um, and thank you for your questions. I really appreciate that. Um, so just to show you, just while we finish up, um, I do have a book of all of Shakespeare's stories um, which is really nicely um, put together and illustrated um, so this is fantastic this is a really I love this book um, it's quite you can you see it's quite creepy <laughs> it's like quite dark artistry um, but really cool. I love all this stuff. I just think it's fascinating. And I think the art is beautiful. Um, and there's all sorts. All sorts. We've got King Henry. Um, we've got lots of different plays. The Taming of the Shrew. Absolutely fantastic play. Um, so, yeah. Good old Shakespeare. Can't go wrong with a bit of William Shakespeare. Um, right, well, that concludes um, the talk for today. Um, if there's anything that you want uh, to learn about, um, please uh, comment or send Alexandra a message. Um, uh, because if there's anything you want, want to learn more about or have any discussions about, then please um, let me know. Um, thank you so much for those of you who have listened and asked questions and I've really enjoyed talking about it. It's been my pleasure. Um, I really enjoy just talking about all sorts of things. Um, so far I've done a talk on education, uh, a talk on uh, Oxford and now a talk on the theatre. So if there's anything else you want to learn about, just let us know and uh, have a lovely evening or whatever time it is where you are. It's uh, six o'clock here, so time for me to get some dinner. Um, thanks again and uh, peace and love. Bye, bye-bye.